expansion project in East Harris County near Baytown, Texas, is addressing the problem of stormwater runoff in a new way for the area. Because of its flat terrain, flooding is common in Harris County, even as drought has seared most of Texas in recent years. So on the new project, the technique of low impact development, or LID, has been used to reduce potential flooding while decreasing pollution found in stormwater runoff. LID is also improving roadway aesthetics and saving local government money in the long term. LID design will help minimize any negative impact of expanding a one and a half mile section of Sholander Road from two lanes to four lanes with a continuous left turn center lane. Driving the need for a wider road is the expansion of a nearby chemical plant, which is bringing new economic benefits to the area, but also increasing the number of heavy trucks and workers who will use the road. Construction work began in the summer of 2013. Harris County selected the engineering firm EHRA to design the lid road and help supervise the project. Later, the county hired Angel Brothers Enterprises for the construction work. Funding was provided by C.P. Kim, a subsidiary of Chevron Phillips, which owns the plant and adjacent roadside acreage. Lid design was chosen for this project in coordination with the Chevron Phillips Cedar Bayou plant and Harris County Engineering Department because they felt that an environmentally friendly road was the appropriate application for this particular design. Except for the lid elements, construction of the roadway was much like any other. After the old asphalt was removed, the soil graded, and a lime-treated subgrade installed, workers put steel rebar in place in order to strengthen the load-bearing capability of the new surface, creating a layer of pavement 12 inches thick, much thicker than typically used in a road, so as to accommodate the stress of heavy truck traffic. Workers first removed the southbound lane while the other side was kept open. And then once the new southbound lanes were ready, the northbound lane was excavated and built. Culvert crossings also had to be widened to accommodate the wider road section. The work crews excavated the crossing at McGee Gully, the main drainage channel, and a series of large culverts, essentially concrete boxes, were set in place. As the work on the southbound side began to progress, the first part of the lid road elements were added. These included bioswales, gently sloping wide ditches along the west side of the road that would eventually contain native drought-resistant vegetation, filter media, and erosion protection. The 60-foot wide bioswales take the place of a typical stormwater drainage structure, such as manholes and concrete pipes, as well as detention ponds. Early in the process, representatives of Harris County, EHRA engineers, and Angel Brothers Construction held the first in a bi-weekly series of meetings to assess progress and issues. We have completed the northbound lanes to approximately Station 17. We're pouring that today. Because the various players functioned as a smoothly operating team, the first part of the project was almost a month ahead of schedule in the early going. The lack of rain helped too. Well, the weather's cooperated with us. Uh, we are ahead of schedule. Completion date was uh, September the 8th. And I think we're probably gonna beat that by at least a month. Showlander Road is located in the Cedar Bayou watershed. And a major benefit from the lid design is reducing the amount of silts, oil, and any heavy metals that travel with the runoff that eventually reaches the bayou. Cedar Bayou flows through saltwater marshes important to wildlife just before it reaches Galveston Bay. The bayou is already considered by state agencies to be environmentally impaired, and reducing pollution in Galveston Bay is crucial to the economically important seafood industry. Lid has the ability to reduce contaminants because of the plants that we put in the system. Um, Plants have been used on brownfield sites, super toxic contaminated sites for years now. And in our small system, they can reduce out um, 50, 70, sometimes 90 to 100 percent of some of the nutrients, um, some of the toxic nutrients that are in our typical stormwater system. And also, it's holding the water for 24 to 48 hours. Holding that water also gives it more time for the solids to fall out and the toxins to be taken up by the plants. There are three features that make the lid road work. 
First, the project includes a bioswale, which serves as a linear detention. Then, a cross slope of the roadway. And finally, five focal points, which are part of the biofiltration system. These focal points serve as high-performance drains and as filters for the first flush of runoff. After first excavating a pit for the filter elements, workers put in place a layer of plastic grids called an underdrain in the bottom of the focal point. Then a layer of geotextile mesh is added. After the mesh, a layer of clean stone, similar to gravel, is brought in next and spread over the lower layers. Once the gravel is complete, a high-performance biofiltration media is then added as the next layer. This engineered soil is spread evenly over the gravel. And the final top layer, consisting of clean hardwood mulch, is then brought in and spread evenly in layers. And all of those work together to reduce um, water velocity and also take out sediments and toxins from the system. Filtered water from the focal points will flow in small pipes before entering McGee Gully. Following the road design, work crews constructed a junction manhole for access to these pipes just before they reached the gully. The workers then swung large precast concrete sections of the manhole into place after the pipes were connected. Special inlets along the edge of the road were also installed to permit the flow of water from the road to the bioswale. As part of the design concept, a 2% cross slope of the roadway allows all runoff to flow from east to west, allowing the bioswale to be constructed on the west side only. As a result, there's no need for storm sewers under the road. The bioswales, in addition to improving water quality, also perform a linear detention and slow the runoff into McGee Gully. Upon construction completion, the gentle slopes of the bioswales were sprayed with a slurry of seeds and mulch called hydromulch to generate fast growth of grasses. This serves to stabilize the slopes and provide additional runoff filtration. EHRA has done several projects using this lid application. Uh, this one being obviously for a road, but we've also done it on higher density projects such as um, apartments, townhomes, and condominium projects where land is very, very expensive and getting a lot of structures on that particular piece of land is paramount. Uh, in those applications, lid with localized focal points, rain gardens, and other bioswale features worked into the landscaping in and around buildings uh, tends to minimize the need or eliminates in some cases the need for your conventional detention pond and therefore you can increase the density of the project and still meet the flood control criteria for allowable runoff. Slowing down fast flowing water is also important. By creating a more natural system of flood control and detention, low impact development reduces the amount of land needed for detention and eliminates or reduces the cost of underground storm sewer pipes. In this case, the cost savings was unusually high $20 million. For example, in this project, it cost approximately $5 million to do. Typically, this project would have been about $7 million had we done traditional construction with storm sewers. However, because there were 32 pipelines and a water canal, it would have cost an additional $18 million if we had to adjust all the pipelines in the water canal, which we didn't have to do because of using this type of construction. Aesthetic appeal is another significant benefit of low impact development. Instead of building more concrete structures, lid design works with nature to manage stormwater flows. For all these reasons, lid is changing the approach to road construction. Well, I think it's gonna be important to anybody that builds roads, but we're looking at it at every project. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't make sense, but we consider it on every project we build now, just because of the potential the large potential for cost savings and cleaning up the environment. It is possible to either preserve or recreate natural landscape features while minimizing the effects of stormwater runoffs. By creating functional and appealing site drainage, low impact development can begin the process of treating stormwater as a resource rather than as a waste product. In the end, new ideas and new methods like LID will enhance the livability of our nation's urban areas.